This must have been some party, Varuna said, staring blankly at the image provided by their orbital scan. Next to her, Mr. Cart nodded weakly. His lieutenant's words were a massive understatement. They arrived in the Agea system a few days ago, after procuring some escort ships to ensure safe passage across the wild frontier, looking for runaway partying students from Galatian Academy, and were looking for signs of them. And now, they found exactly that. The party must have indeed been legendary. The site it took place in could be seen from space in form of a massive, still-smoking crater. Fortunately, the cause of that crater wouldn't remain a secret for long. Academy had a number of small comm satellites orbiting the dry world, where their outpost was, and it seemed that it was permanently connected and gathering data from whatever was down there. And, of course, human nature dictates that when one person says, hold my beer, someone will always record the utter idiocy that is about to follow, and in this case, drunken students were no different. The recording, for the most part, was just drunken, incoherent rambling, the kind that was both annoying and embarrassing to listen to while sober. A lot of faces passed in front of the camera, most of them red and shiny, a telltale sign of a party in full swing. There was a lot of shouting and bass-boosted music, which made the students even more difficult to understand. Finally, however, the scenery and the video changed. Like, my dude, I'm telling you, these edibles ain't shit, a barely coherent voice said. I took, what, 12 of these pills? Look at me, I'm standing on one leg with perfect balance. It'll just burst out for no reason. Dennis? You are lying on the floor, a softer voice said from behind the camera. Ha! <laughs> That's what you think, my dude, the person called Dennis said, his face flat on the ground. That's like what the establishment is telling you to think, before the most important frame of reference, which is to say my own perception of reality, I'm not just standing on one leg with perfect balance, I'm absolutely fucking nailing it. And, like, objectively you can disagree, because your frame is different from mine, and that means it's totally incorrect, because reality is just what we perceive with our brains. So you can't be right, because you don't exist, savvy? Sure thing, Dennis, the other person said, and you can almost hear eyes rolling behind the camera. Note to self, never drink or do drugs with philosophy department. Only! Drink and do drugs with philosophy department, my dude. We're the only ones who understand reality after it's been left naked from all the comforts and lies we tell ourselves every day. Like, you all get drunk to stop thinking and wrap yourself even more in a soft cocoon of lies. But when we drink, we see reality for what it truly is. It's scary, Diane. We all suck. You wish. Now come on, let's get you something to eat. I brought frozen pizza with me, should put you back on your feet. Maybe. Alas, the great void of conscious existence cannot hope to be filled with mere food. But my stomach can. But, like, how are we even going to heat it up? Did you see the dudes from engineering did to a microwave? Dennis said, trying to get up from the floor. He was getting there, albeit very slowly. Knowing them, I expect nothing short of actual black magic, Diane replied. And you're right. I've no clue what they did there, my dude, but when they finished they called it a microwave. Some girl from Xenobiology tried to heat up a cup of tea and now she has like 27 new tumors. Serves her right for microwaving tea, the bloody heretic, Diane sounded appalled. But yeah, that means we can't really heat the pizza there. We could go outside and build a campfire. But that would take forever. And besides, my dude, I didn't join the academy to go outside. I'm not a pro. There has to be something we can do. For a few moments, both students were silent, and then Dennis suddenly turned to the camera, his eyes glowing with eagerness. I got it. The microwave is dead, but there is one spot on level minus three which has all the heat we need and then some. In the orbit in front of the screen, Varuna facepalmed. I think this has to be the dumbest suicide I've ever seen, and I have lived, she said weakly. To the reactor room, Dennis proclaimed, and started dragging the other student with him. 
She didn't protest. Clearly, the idea of quick snack was enough to override what little common sense was left after alcohol did its job. But while it seemed like the recording would end, suddenly the pair, quite literally, walked into someone else. Oi, oi, look, it's the man himself! The new arrival said, picking himself up off the floor. The hell are you doing here, my man? The crew is waiting for you with another keg! Well, they can wait a bit longer, my dude, cause I need some food in me right now, Dennis replied. And if they have a blooming keg, then what the hell are you doing here instead of chugging it? The third student seemed embarrassed for a moment before he finally said, Well, I'm looking for that girl from Xenobiology. You know, white hair, purple eye implants, very shy. Thought she'd maybe join us and have some fun. She wouldn't, even if she was here, the girl holding the camera said. Which she isn't. Said something about too much noise and keeping an eye on her project in the second outpost and fucked off on the shuttle. Why, she was, the third one said. That was our fucking shuttle! We, like, brought it here with all the fun stuff on board. And what the hell, it had taken, like, three or four days to get to second outpost anyway. Well, the party has been going for over a week now, and it doesn't seem like it's going to end anytime soon. Guess she just didn't like the crowd. Oh, right, fair. Not everyone enjoys our sense of humour. Nobody enjoys your sense of humour. The AI department is... The girl started, but Dennis cut her off. Right, so, uh, my dudes, no time for department wars. We have pizza to make. Wait, you lot have pizza? My man, I can even ignore the fact that you're from philosophy if you'll bum me a piece or two. Sure thing, my dude. Let's go! And with that, the video once again dissolved into shaky camera feed mixed with drunken rambling. At least until the three students entered the reactor room, which caused their camera to die from radiation. Mr. Kat and Varuna could only assume that they managed to fulfill their objective of getting snacks. The smoldering crater where the outpost used to be was a proof of that. Still, that last part of students' conversation did offer an important clue. Namely, that the Academy must have had yet another outpost in the system, and a quick scan showed that, indeed, there clearly was one more energy signature on another planet, an almost barren, dusty rock deeper in the system. But while Mr. Card wanted to go right away, the crew seemed far more fascinated with the world they were just orbiting, because Academy Outpost was very clearly not the only structure there. So, Captain... Are we sending a salvage party down there, or are we going to waste this opportunity? House asked, looking at the sensors. He was pointing to a spot on the southern hemisphere, not that far from the research station, where the scanners clearly showed outlines of a city, or, to be more precise, several cities half buried in the sand. I don't think we have time to waste, Mr. Katz said. Besides, if Academy was here before us, then we can probably assume they picked those ruins clean. We don't know that, Captain. And even if they did, just look at the size of those cities down there. No way the Academy took everything. We could spare a day or two to send a few hundred people down there. I'll make sure they'll work quickly. We're here on the job, House. We should focus on it, Mr. Kant said, but he was already caving in. More and more crew members sent him messages asking for a trip to the surface. After all, exploring old ruins was almost always a profitable job. Even Varuna was itching to go. House is right, boss. The girl in the second outpost can wait today. Also, are you sure everything is alright? Usually you'd be the first person to send a savage team down. He shook his head and sighed. I just feel like we'll earn a lot more, in terms of creds and knowledge, if we focus on working with the Academy. But you're right, we can spare some time. House, get as many people as you can organize, take Varuna with you and strip the place of everything valuable. You have 48 hours. Aye, aye, Captain. The old pirate grinned on the screen and turned to his crew. Yeah, head the boss, maggots. Get yourself suited up. Moments later, the fleet was abuzz with preparations, and Zala too decided to give Mr. Cat a call. Have to say, Chief, I didn't expect to see such extensive ruins that far from the core, she said, looking at the sensor readings. These cities must have housed tens of millions of people. I thought only a handful of core wards had urban centers like that. After the gates shut down, sure, he replied. But before that, pretty much entire Persian sector was inhabited. 
From what I remember from old documentaries on Holovitz, there were over 200 inhabited worlds and stations in the sector alone, with over 60 billion people living on them. Zala gasped. It really did put things in perspective. Bloody hell. And now we have, what, maybe 20 million people between all factions? Damn, I'd give everything to see this place back when the gates were still up. So would I, Zala. So would I. And to think, this place is to be a backwater. There were singular solar systems back in the domain, which housed more people than entire Persian sector back in the day. Guess the Prophet was right about something, Zala said solemnly. We really did fall from grace, didn't we? So it looks like. And honestly, with everything that's going on, with hegemony and the rest constantly fighting over scraps, I don't see the situation getting any better. Maybe, but at least we know it can get worse, like it did for those poor bastards down there, Zala said, but they were not meant to continue this conversation, as House's salvage expedition required everyone's attention. Especially since it was supposed to be a quick, and so potentially dangerous one. Fortunately, the ruins proved to be far less dangerous than everyone expected. Once the salvagers landed, they found out great many security systems, ones that could rip their shuttles to shreds in a matter of seconds. But all these systems ran out of power ages ago and the weapons, along with pretty much everything else, were stripped of parts and anything useful, exactly like Mr. Kant expected. Still, when the two days were up, House's crew didn't come back empty-handed. They managed to find a decent haul of fuel, supplies and basic materials, which were buried in a collapsed spaceport. But the most important thing recovered from the ruins was, like always, knowledge. When House came back, he brought with him parts and blueprints of advanced starship systems, which some of the fleet techies were already eager to test out in the field, to dismay and terror of their more conservative and reasonable friends. Still, despite all that, House had to admit that this salvage run wasn't all that great, but at least the fuel was a nice bonus. One that meant that at least some of the cost of this trip would be returned. So. As soon as all the materials gathered in the ruined cities were brought on board, Cat Logistics made its way to another planet, one that, they hoped, contained the second Academy outpost, and the object they were asked to retrieve. They arrived in the orbit few days later, and immediately spotted the research station on the surface, a large complex of greenhouses and wind turbines sprawled near the equator. There were only a handful of habitations buildings, though, built around a landing pad, and that's where the company turned its sensors and comms first, trying to contact the missing student. But after a good hour of calling, there was no response. I thought maybe this girl didn't actually come here, but the shuttle is on the landing pad, Varuna said, looking at the sensors. Think maybe something happened to her? Only one way to find out. Her boss replied. We're going down there, and we'll check. Alright, sure. Let me just grab a way, team, and we'll... No, Varuna, Mr. Katz said. By we, I mean you and me. If you would be so kind, go prep the shuttle and pick me up at my airlock. He then turned on the comm and added. House, grab your salvages and go down there. You can see that there are some old abandoned cities few hundred kilometers south of the Academy outpost. You may be able to find something of value there. We'll check the outpost ourselves. Sure thing, boss, the old pirate replied. If Mr. Carr's decision surprised him, he didn't show it. Here's hoping we'll be more lucky with our findings this time. He disconnected after saying that, but Varuna, unlike House, was not about to stay quiet. Are you... are you sure about this, boss? She asked, a genuine care in her voice. Not that I have anything against you doing actual work from time to time, but it could be dangerous down there. It's just an empty research outpost, Varuna. We'll be fine. I'm not worried about anything down there. Well, maybe except gravity. I am worried about our crew. What if they... well, you know. They won't realize anything. You heard House. He probably thinks it was just a figure of speech on my part. Now please, let me go with you for once. There's probably no one down there, which means we won't get an opportunity like that anytime soon. She sighed and eventually nodded. If that's what you want, boss, then sure. I'll go get the shuttle. 
Around two hours later, when House and most of the company's crew were already on the surface, a small shuttle, personal property of Varuna herself, quietly touched down on the landing pad in the middle of Academy Outpost. It kicked up a massive cloud of dust, which seemed to be a major feature of this empty world. The doors opened, the ramp lowered, and the lieutenant stepped out, in full combat gear, two assault rifles hanging from her back. She changed the area and called Mr. Cart, still waiting inside. Place is clear, boss. Kind of. It looks like a tornado came through this place. Or a head of rampaging jungle buffalo. The power is on, but I don't pick any defensive systems. Should be safe for you to disembark, but keep in mind the gravity here is a lot more than what you're used to up there. And let me be honest, it's going to take us days to check this place out with just two of us. The airlock on the shuttle opened again, and Mr. Cart, slowly and carefully, went down the ramp. Varuna could hear his strained breath. He looked around the mess and went quiet for a moment, breathing heavily in silence. Then, finally, he seemed to reach some kind of conclusion and said, you're right, we'll be here forever if it's just two of us down there. But I'd like to try anyway. We can call the crew in an hour or two if we won't find anything. But in the interest of time, we should split up. You go check those buildings there, I'll look in the hangar. Varuna couldn't believe her ears. Boss, are you sure? She said, looking at him with concern. Look, I appreciate you want to help, but you're not really good with planets. At least let me go with you, just in case. In case of what? There's nothing here, just dust and empty buildings. You think I can't even... He paused and wheezed for a moment through his helmet. When he spoke up again, he sounded a lot less angry. Varuna, listen to me. I know I'm useless when it comes to pretty much anything except flying. But all I do is sit up there in that cabin. I just want to do something useful for a change. I'm technically in charge of this company. And yet, if you ask around the fleet, most people consider you to be the boss. And no, this is not jealousy, it's just... you know. She looked at him again, thoughtfully, and, of course, she knew what he meant. There were not many occasions for her boss to go anywhere and do anything, especially now with the new crew. The old team, the one they lost on the bodge job far away from the core, some of them Varuna could trust, but she still had her doubts about the new ones. They seemed decent enough, sure, but as she learned back then, when everyone except her boss and herself were killed in a pirate ambush, people were often decent until, very suddenly, they were not. If someone snitched back then, it'd be best to assume someone would snitch now as well, so neither Varuna nor Mr. Cart were willing to take a risk, which meant he stayed in his cabin all the time. And though, like he always said he lived for flying, she could understand he longed for something else every now and then. Which is why, reluctantly, she agreed. Alright, fine, have it your way, boss man. But if anything goes wrong, if there's any trouble out there, you call me right away, understood? Of course, Madam Lieutenant, he said with a mock salute and then turned to leave towards the hangar. And thanks, he added. All that Varuna could do now was to shake her head with resignation and go in the other direction, hoping things wouldn't suddenly go very wrong. What she didn't know, however, was that Mr. Cart had a plan, and as soon as he entered the hangar, he knew exactly where to go. Our readings were correct, Midnight Dissonant said quietly in his helmet. As predicted, one of us is here. This is a big hangar he replied, turning on his helmet's flashlight. The place looked like an ancient cave, filled to the brim with all manner of garbage that the academicians have amassed over the years of work. And I doubt it's just lying somewhere in the open. I don't think I'll be able to find it by myself. Worry not, human friend. One cannot simply hold one of us in a box somewhere. A sophisticated cooling system is needed to prevent malfunctions. And a system like that would eat up a lot of power. Got it, I'm gonna look for power signatures. He switched something in his helmet and began rummaging through the mountain of garbage, a process made even slower by his poor condition. Every minute or so he had to stop and wheeze for a moment to catch his breath. This gravity really did a number on him. I have to ask, Midnight, 
he said a few minutes later while trying to pull a promising looking box from beneath some old farming equipment. What are you even going to do when we find one of you? I do hope we don't have to give away control of another one of our ships. There will be no need for that. One is more than enough. And as for what we will do, first we will rejoice, then we will learn, thirdly we will educate, and then, finally, we will unite. Yeah, right. It would help if you were a bit less cryptic about this whole affair. We will explain in greater detail once time is not such an issue. But we have it. It is here. Not the container you're holding, but the one next to it. The unmarked grey one. Take it. He pulled at the blank grey box with all his strength, groaning with extortion until, finally, it broke free. A bunch of tools and other boxes fell to the floor, but Mr. Cart wasn't looking at them. He fiddled with the lock for a few moments, and finally the box popped open. Blue light from inside reflected itself in his helmet's visor. Damn. I've never seen an elf up close, he said, awestruck. In the box in his hands was a blue orb submerged in coolant. The most rare, valuable, and the most illegal thing one could lay their hands on in the sector. Certain people, oh, oh, so many certain people, would be willing to kill thousands for it. But there was no time for all, because mere seconds later, a comm channel from Varuna clicked in Mr. Card's ear. Boss, please tell me you're fine, she said, and he could hear fear in her voice. He closed the grey box and hid it underneath his spacesuit. I'm fine. Anything happened on your end? Yes, I found the student we were looking for, in a way. And I found something else, but I have no clue how to describe it. You should probably take a look at it yourself. Understood, I'm coming to you now. No, wait. I'll go get you from the hangar and we'll go together. There is a... problem. It was rare for Varuna to sound so serious, so Mr. Card did exactly as she asked, and followed her to one of the laboratories on the other side of the landing pad. Inside, the place looked like a bomb went off. Almost everything was smashed and thrown all over the place. And in the middle of all this chaos was the missing student or what was left of her, which admittedly wasn't much. A few body parts and blood splatters scattered all over the room. Mr. Cart was briefly shocked when he saw that. After all, he never had much contact with people when they were alive, let alone smeared all over the floor. But his shock was quickly focused on something else, a main feature of the room to which Veruna pointed with utter disgust on her face. I'm not sure this belongs to the IT department, she said, but I don't think we should just leave it here. In fact, I think we should take it with us and then ask those Galatian bastards a few questions. Her voice was dripping with venom, and Mr. Card understood why. For, in the middle of the room stood a massive glass tank, filled to the brim with reddish liquid, and inside of it was... something. None of them had words to describe the bizarre shape inside, but they could easily see one important feature eyes. Eyes which stared at them intently from the moment they entered the room. I think this may be what they sent us here for, Mr. Card said, trying and failing to stop staring into these eyes. I don't think anyone can operate this, whatever the fuck this is, without some advanced programming involved. Probably. Or they were lying. Telling contractors to go grab something for IT does sound better than go grab a machine that makes horrors beyond human comprehension. I thought you'd be sympathetic towards this creature inside. I want to, trust me, but I'm also a bit suspicious given all this mess around the place, and the corpse. I told you there was a problem, remember? Look there. She pointed to another part of the lab, where there was identical glass tank. Only difference was that this one was broken and whatever was inside was nowhere to be seen. Ah, I see, Mr. Cart said, his hands shaking a little. Yes, it's probably best for us to not hang around then. How about we go back to the shuttle and call House and his salvagers from there? We could tell them to bring guns. Lots of guns. All of the guns. That would be best, boss. Let's go. 
few minutes later, salvage team received a rather nervous call from their boss, asking for them to redirect a few dozen men and a bunch of heavy equipment to his location to recover something of important value. They didn't mind, it was their job after all, but they were still surprised that their aloof CEO was actually there on the planet with them. And they were not the only ones surprised. Back in the orbit, Zala received a mysterious call from Dr. Disco, who urgently invited her to his office. When she arrived, he locked the door behind her. Apologies for secrecy, miss, but I believe we have a situation that needs resolving, he said without even giving her a chance to say hello. And it would be best if important officers of the fleet, ones like you and Captain House, were on board with the plan. All right, Zala said, taking a step back. The doctor wasn't a good conversationalist on the best of days, but now he seemed completely manic. I can call House right now if you want. Wait, not yet. First I have to ask, can you keep a secret? Do you think he can keep a secret? Probably, yes. At least as long as it's not anything life-threatening. What the hell is happening here, Doc? I may have done something to slightly undermine the company we work for, Disco said, but he didn't sound embarrassed about it. When I heard that Mr. Cart was going to the surface with Lieutenant Europa, I snuck into the docking bay and planted a little spy camera on her personal shuttle. On the outside, of course. I wanted to see the man in other circumstances than as a helmeted face on the screen. I'm sure you were curious as well. Of course, but not to the point of spying on our chief, dammit! Zala started walking back to the door. And I'm not sure what's worse here. The fact that you have spy cams, or the fact that you are technically violating Mr. Card's confidentiality? He's not technically my patient. Unlike the rest of the fleet, he seems to be taking care of his health by himself. He is still our boss! Damn it! I hope they won't notice this camera. You could get us all fired. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to find a decent job like this one? I'm afraid I lack your experience on this matter, miss. But as I said, it was nothing but curiosity at first, but now, well, the situation kind of changed. Do take a look. He showed her the screen. On it, the camera recorded Shuttle's descent all the way to the surface of the planet below. Once it was down on the landing pad, the airlock opened and a ramp rolled down. Seconds later, Varuna walked out in her full combat gear. She checked the area and signalled to her boss to come out, but what came outside was not what Zala was expecting. Instead of a man in full spacesuit, a small round drone flew out of the airlock, the same kind of drone Mr. Cat was using to do things outside of his cabin. She expected that the man would follow it, but no such thing happened. This doesn't seem right, Zala finally said, watching as Varuna went one way and the drone flew towards the hangar. Maybe he's still in the shuttle? Then what would be the point of him going down there just to stay locked up anyway? Disco asked. He fast-forwarded the video until Varuna and the drone came back, and moments later, House received the call to come along and pick something up with his salvagers. Now then, miss, do you have any idea what the hell we just saw there? Zala stared at the screen in silence for a good minute and weighed her options. Yes, she wanted to know just what the deal was with the mysterious employer. On the other hand, she knew that curiosity rarely paid off in Persian Sector. Then, finally, she made a decision. I have no fucking clue, Doctor, but I guess that once Lieutenant is back on board, we're going to have a little chat.